You probably wouldn't know why if you haven't ever studied Japanese before. Can you believe this is real? By the way, my wife and I thought this rule was ridiculous. Yes, I know. The super tiresome side of Japanese culture. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Due to restrictions finally being relaxed, I see more and more people coming to Japan. However, I often receive messages telling me that they want to prepare gifts for the Japanese people they are going to meet, but are afraid that they might give something inappropriate. I can understand why you're worried. Japanese love rules, don't we? So today, I will introduce five gift giving taboos in Japan. The five taboos will get more and more important towards the end, so please stay with us till the end of this video. Also, in the last chapter, I would like to give you my advice on gifts that I rather recommend. By watching this video, you will forever be released from the fear of giving gifts to Japanese people and will be able to sleep well at night. If there are any other questions about gift giving after watching this video, please let me know in the comments. And before I start, although these taboos were introduced in books and websites, in reality, they are not that strictly considered today. In the end, what's most important is to think about what's best for the person who you're giving the gift to. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's One, cutlery. Then let's start with something that is rather easier to understand why it is a taboo. Cutlery like kitchen knives is considered taboo because they imply the meaning of cutting relationships. Also items that could break and shatter like glass are often associated with broken relationships. It should especially be avoided when given as a wedding gift. However, because there are many high quality kitchen knives in Japan, I think many people would be pleased to receive them. I actually had a friend who gave us a pair of glasses for our wedding, but we are happy to use them even today. A knife might be a little strange for a wedding celebration, but if it is what is desired, in the end, that's also fine. 2. Combs Now from here, the way of thinking is going to get very unique to Japan. Do you have any clue why a comb is a gift taboo? You probably wouldn't know why if you haven't ever studied Japanese before. Combs are called kushi in Japanese. This is actually a homonym to kushi, which means to suffer and die. This is why combs are considered to be an unlikely item. Those of you who've been watching my videos must know already, but Japanese people love such homonyms. For example, in a previous video, I introduced a superstition that clipping your nails at night is bad because that is called yozume which is the same pronunciation as yozume, which means to shorten one's lifespan. Another gift taboo that is related to numbers is the amount of money you give as gifts at a wedding. In Japan, there is tradition to hand money to the newly married couple when you take part in their wedding. When you do so, you need to decide the amount of money you want to give them. But you should never give them an even number like 20,000, 40,000, or 60,000 yen. It's bad luck because it can be divided into two evenly and can be associated with the couple being separated. Can you believe this is real? By the way, my wife and I thought this rule was ridiculous and we agreed to ask our guests to all bring 20,000 yen. But do you think we will ever split up? Three, tea. Now I bet this is very surprising to you. I believe that many people have an image that Japanese people often drink tea. This is due to an old tradition. Earlier, I explained that money is given as a gift to celebrate a wedding, but money called golden is also given at funerals as an expression of condolences. A common gift that the family gives back to the participants for this money is tea. In other words, if you give someone tea on any other occasion, it seems to be associated with someone's death. However, if you know that the person likes tea and it clearly has a bright package, it may not be a problem. In the same way, white handkerchiefs and chopsticks are considered gift taboos because they're also associated with death. A handkerchief may seem like the right gift, but a white one is not good because it resembles the cloth you would put over the face of a deceased person. Chopsticks as gifts could have a good meaning, especially for weddings, 
However, you may want to refrain from giving it to anyone who is hospitalized or elderly. This is because chopsticks, hashi, and bridges, hashi, are homonyms in Japanese, and it can be associated with the crossing of the Sanzu River. Sanzu River is a river that the dead crosses when they go to the afterlife, as believed in Buddhist ideology. By the way, in Japan, there's a tradition of passing the bones of lost ones after cremation using chopsticks. But this is done in the hope that the deceased person will be able to cross the river safely. 4. Socks and Shoes You may have opportunities to give gifts to someone who is older or superior to you. However, Japan is a society with a very strict hierarchical relationships, so there are a few things that should not be given to avoid being rude. Socks and shoes are the two of the most representative ones. Items worn on the feet are considered taboos because of the implication of stepping on them. Also, socks are called kutsushita in Japanese, and this word contains shita means down or lower. This gives it another reason why it shouldn't be given to superiors. Yes, I know, the super tiresome side of Japanese culture. Let me introduce a few other taboos too. 1. Writing utensils. Use this and do your best. 2. Watch or back. Be more diligent. 3. Belt. Pull yourself together. All these messages are considered bad because they sound like a command from a subordinate to a superior. By the way, I've made a video in the past about words you shouldn't say to your boss in Japan. So if you're interested, I hope you can check that out too. 5. Something too expensive. Lastly, let's talk about the price of the gifts. Japan has many traditions of giving gifts to each other, but in general, there's a rule that we must give back a gift that is half the price of what we received. I too first thought that it is pointless to receive a gift if you have to give back the person so much. But it seems that this exchange itself is a form of communication. In other words, you should avoid buying a super expensive gift to show your appreciation. Japanese people tend to think that they must give something of the same level in return, so some people might feel sorry to accept it. Of course, the average price will vary depending on the occasion, but if it's just a greeting gift, a few thousand yen worth of something is recommended. It may seem stingy, but Japanese people find it easier that way. So, we discussed a lot of gift rules, but now I'm sure you have no clue what to give. I always struggle with this too, but from my experience, I recommend the following three things. 1. Something unique to your country. 2. Something you can consume. 3. Something you ask the other person with some choices. If you give a gift unique to your country, the taboos we talked about today will oftentimes not be applied. For example, even if you give your friend some tea, if it is a rare kind that's not common in Japan, no one will associate it with funerals. Secondly, I think it is also important that the gift is something that can be quickly consumed. For example, if you give a gift like clothing that could last a long time, there's a risk that it could become an inconvenience if the other person doesn't like the design. Thus, some people recommend sweets that can be eaten, or high quality tissues and toilet paper that can be used and consumed. By the way, I love giving Japanese incense as gifts. Of course, there are people who like or dislike certain fragrances, so I try to choose ones that are not so strong. Even if they don't like the fragrance and want to throw it away, it is small and easy to do so. Lastly, if you really have no clue what to give, you should just ask. But you need to be careful that by 99% chance, they will tell you that they don't need anything. So I would recommend you to give some options in advance and make them choose something. Like, you can ask them, if it was either coffee or cookies, which would you like? This will make it much easier for them to ask for a gift. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduce the five gift-giving taboos in Japan. 1. Cutlery. Cutlery and items that break like glass can be associated with broken relationships. 2. Combs. Combs are called kushi in Japanese, which is a homonym of kushi, which means to suffer and die. 3. Tea. Tea is a common gift that is given in return for money collected at funerals, therefore can be associated with someone's death. White handkerchiefs and chopsticks are also not recommended as gifts for someone who is ill or elderly. 4. Socks and shoes. The following things are not recommended as gifts to give to superiors. 1. Shoes and socks. 
two, riding utensils, three, watch and bags, four, belts, five, something too expensive. Japanese people tend to think that they must give something of the same level in return. So some people might feel sorry to accept something too expensive. My recommended gifts to give a Japanese person are 1. Something unique to your country 2. Something you can consume 3. Something you ask the other person with some choices so that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this video was useful for you to learn about the gift giving culture in Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And please do check out all the other activities I'm doing inside this description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. So as I said in the beginning of this video, to be honest, I think people in my generation or maybe even my parents' generation, well, it uh, really depends on where you are and such, but I think many people wouldn't mind these gift taboos as much as it was strict in the past. Maybe like for example, while my parents are in their 50s, my grandparents are in their 70s and 80s, maybe people above that age might still mind these things, especially if it's like the first time meeting you know, each other and such. But anyone younger than that probably wouldn't mind so much about these taboos anymore, to be honest. Because before I looked these stuff up on books and on the internet and such, I, I would never even consider it myself before. You know, of course, when I gave the gifts to superiors, I would mind it. But when I, whenever I received anything myself, I wouldn't be like, what should I say? feel that the other person is doing something rude just because of them, something they wouldn't mind at all. It's really all off to the relationship. However, the thing is, the reason why I still wanted to make this video is because when you do actually give gifts to someone in Japan, most times I personally feel from the experience of you know exchanging messages with everyone, I think a lot of people told me that they want to give gifts, uh, gifts to someone who is uh, more uh, older than them or someone's superiors or for example senseis of the martial arts or traditional culture that they're training in. In that case they, they might be in a older generation so it's something that you could still keep somewhere inside your mind. Yeah. So again, what, um, among all the taboos videos that I made in the past before, this is this video is probably the one that you can really go a little bit easy on. It's, it's not not that strict in Japan today.